Yo, what's poppin'? This is Behind the Edit with Jordan Mitchell. Basically, I made this album visualizer for my friend. Soft Eyes. I'm gonna break down how I made the edit. Not exactly step by step, but like show you my, my workflow. Here's the, uh, the composition. You can see there's kind of four main spots here. And so I'll start off with the box because that's the biggest part. I'll start with the basics first and then I'll get into more of the stylized bits. So start off box. Um, you see I have this 3D box that rotates throughout, right? And so what I did, it's not actually a rectangle shape. So each of these six layers is one side of the box. Six 3D layers. So if I solo like the front, you see it's just like a thin thing. I'll show you a side one as well. They're just, um, they're just flat 3D layers that have been positioned correctly. So how I went about doing that is if you open it up, you know, it's just one layer of this. I made each of these layers in Illustrator. So this is like a 2D version of the box um, and all the measurements line up so that, you know, this length here is the same as this length here, it's the same as this. And then I exported each of these layers as a JPEG, um, like each of these artboards. And then kind of, um, and that's what each of these is. I pressed on this little cube thing to make them a 3D layer. And then I'll show you this front and maybe a side one. So what I did here was rotate the Y axis 90 degrees. So it basically goes like this to this. 90 degrees Y is this way. I don't know how else to describe that. Yeah, so basically just do that, rotate 90 degrees, and then you'll have to adjust the position a bit. Um, I'm gonna be real, I forget how I did it. Um, kind of just, you'll just have to fiddle around with it until it lines up. And usually, if you can't get it to exactly line up, like let's say you're just doing it manually and you get it to like back, it's like 415, you can be like, oh, it'll probably be 400, or negative 400. Um, like it'll usually these numbers round up. Um, but yeah, anyway, so then I just went ahead and did that for everything. So for the side panels, I rotated 90 degrees. The top, I rotated the X. Yeah, the X axis, I rotated 90 degrees. This Y axis, I rotated 180 because without it, it's just backwards. So 180 just flipped it around. Anyways, so that's how I got this box. But now that it's just a box standing still um so then what i went ahead and did is created this null object and took this parent pick whip of each of these layers and pick whipped it to the null oh and then i made sure that the null was a 3d object what that does is link anything you do to the null object to the pick whipped layers so then i went ahead and keyframed the y rotation which is what gets it to spin so now I have a spinning box. Then this is what it would look like without lighting. I went around and added some lighting and a camera. To be honest, I don't know that much about it, so I'm not gonna talk about much about these lighting and camera shit. If you're interested about those, I can just link you to some YouTube tutorials that other people have done. But yeah, now I have a spinning thing. And then what? So one thing I did for a bit of style, I went into each of these layers. I added a bit of grain. If you solo these, you know, you see a little bit of that. But basically all I I did here was create these different solids with different colors. So one was like a, these two were dark greens. Or one's a dark green, one's a slightly lighter green. Light blue and a dark blue. Change the blending mode to dancing dissolve, which basically makes it grainy and randomizes the movement a little bit. And then I brought the opacity down to like really low. And then it's these, just these small little greens that are da dancing around. So I did those on each of the box layers. And below it as well, that's what these two layers are. It's just the same thing. Um, yeah. So that's how I got the grain. So for some added detail, I got these little nugs. <laughs> this was really simple, just keyframing down. Um, they do look pretty cool though. So what I did to stylize them was the same that I did for this box here and for this waveform in the back was I made it, I made three copies. I added this effect called shift channels. So if you look at just one of these layers alone, let me do the box. So this top layer is just red. So I'll take red from red and these other two are full off. And then if you look at this one, it's just green. This one is just blue. Um, and then, and then you see these modes. If you make the top two add, then they come together and it's a full picture. But the reason I did that is because then I added this effect, turbulent displace and keyframed the amount so that it kind of comes in and out. And so see how here it's like, there's just a little bit of channel blur. Here there's like none, there's like none too. Um, and then here there's a bit more. So that's what these little things on the side 
these little rainbow trippy bits come from this turbulent displace effect which is on all these layers and what you can do is because i duplicated the effect i added this evolution in cycle random seed i changed that so then it like they're not in sync they're, they're slightly out of sync which is what you want but yeah so that's that so now i have a trippy looking box i went and did the same thing with these nuggies because actually so wait if i had done it with the add effect like I did the box and see it would have looked a little bit more normal but I made them all dancing dissolve and brought the opacity down a bit just because I thought it looked a little trippier made them look a little cooler um, in the background and then I did the same thing with this waveform below it's dancing dissolve as well I thought it blended in the background a little nicer than normal and so how I did the waveform was really simple I just opened it up this effect called audio spectrum and added this audio layer, this is the music, this is the album, and just fucked around with some of these settings till I got what I want. Basically, you can look up a tutorial on how this works. Yeah, so that's that. Um, that's pretty much most of it, to be honest. One last little touch that I added. So, on the back, I have this little weed plant. If you look, I don't know if you noticed it earlier, but he has a little ooh, blank, a little stone blank. And so the way I did that is first, here's the original lead. I added just two green shapes to cover his eyes and then open up the left eye. So I did this actually out here and then nested it. But basically all I did was was like use the pen tool and basically just recreated each segment of this so i created the upper line the one that's what this is just with the pen tool the lower line created a little circle for the, the pupil and with the white i white just you know the rough thing um but yeah anyways that's that i recreated that shape and then i nested them or pre-composed them and then all i did was so then for the upper line pass i keyframed the path so if you go forward a bit the top one just flattens out a little bit. Same with the bottom one, it closes. This white one I just animated to track in because if I didn't, then you would see the eye white. And the pupil, I just animated the position that it comes down and it looks from side to side. And then this was a bitch because it's a 30 minute long album. I just went in and like copied and pasted the keyframes out for half an hour. Anyway, so, so I think that's the main stuff. I showed you how to make this little 3D box, cereal box, these nuggies, the grain effect, this little panel shift blur, and yeah, that's pretty much everything. That's behind the edit. Push Crunch album visualizer. I'm gonna go link like the, the link for it off. Spotify, Apple Music, all that shit, you know. And <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Peace.